Hey everyone, Uncle Bart here with College Cuisine. Um, a while ago, I may have talked to you a little bit about artichokes and um, how you couldn't find good artichokes right now. And buddy, am I wrong? My friend Tabo went shopping for me the other day and he found these beautiful artichokes and I said, get them. So I'm going to now prepare for you braised artichokes the way my mom used to make. And of course, the way I make as well. I'm not going to stuff them. My mother did something. I could never equal her stuffing. So why even bother? So, but maybe one day in the future. I got three beauties here. Look at that. Now these are artichokes. Good size. They're solid. They're fairly solid. I'm not going to do... <laughs> I think I told you. I love this show called The Chef Show with John Favreau. And him and Roy Choi, they took a whole bunch of artichokes... And they decimated them. They turned them into just hearts of artichokes for um, artichoke confit. Uh -uh. In fact, I make as we do this, I'm making tomato confit, uh, pomodoro confit, Italian. Let's not use those French words too much. For a special dish that I'm cooking um, for a pizza rustica. Um, showing a, a friend of mine how to make that kind of stuff. Anyway. So what we do with the artichoke is, first of all, get rid of all these small little leaves. Just pick them off. And so all the little bits of meat... What the hell? Uh, all the little bits of uh, fiber, they go right off with the leaf. And there's a nice little bit of flesh there to eat when you get to the bottom. Or really, the quote-unquote heart of the artichoke. So you see how the, leaf, the leaves are starting to get a little bit better? Now, now, they're not like uh, uh, papery. That's when you stop peeling them off. So let's do this all at one time. All three artichokes. Now, you got to remember, when we were kids, artichokes were, well, fairly inexpensive. I don't know. I don't remember the exact economics of what it was like. But we had artichokes all the time. And now, this is the first artichoke I've had. I'm not kidding in about 20 or more years. That's how long it's been since I've had an artichoke. Because the last time I was able to go shopping on my own with just a little bit of help from Ben, the kid next door, the artichokes were horrible. They were soft, they were spongy. The leaves were paper all the way to the center. And they were a pretty penny. And I don't know how in the hell they managed to sell those bad boys, really. Did you see that, how it just can you see that? See? That is a good part. This is just the garbage. Just, when it's cooked, I tell you, 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 you scrape them. So that one's good. And now, put that in for now, the third. Now my mom would take these, just like I'm doing now, and put them in a pan. She'd braise them for a little bit. Then, when they were done, she would stuff them with bread stuffing in between the leaves. And she put them back into the braise. And then, if she really was going bananas, she put them in the oven. Just to get like, a little bit of crisp on top. They were out of this world. But, you know, some things you can't duplicate. And I don't know what I do wrong. And she hasn't paid me any special visits to, sell me, you know, to tell me, do that, you moron. Um, I Maybe I'll try again, like I said, one of these centuries. So, yeah, that was kind of yucky. yucky. All right, there we go. There we go. Now, for these top parts here, you take your trusty scissor, and voila. And now for these leaves, you cut off the tops like that. Cut off the tops. This is labor intensive. This is going to take some time. So we're going to be burning some video here. Now, when we were kids... This used to be mine and my sister's job. We would do the cutting like this. You know, we were old enough to do this kind of stuff. And I loved it. I, I keep forgetting to ask my sister about that. In fact, I think I forgot to tell you even got the artichokes. So, here we go. Well, uh, that's good. See how... What I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut the tops right off. And then you'll see what we do next. And I think I did not take enough leaves off of this one. The 
see all that fiber is coming off. If you can see it well, this cell phone video really kind of sucks, but I can't get my camera working right. That will be fixed in future episodes. There you go. That's better. Now, when they do it on, on like Chef Show, they would cut all this away just to reveal that tender choke in there. And I can't see doing that. But anyway, this is that's this is how I was raised. They're doing that for like restaurant food. But I gotta tell you, the um, artichoke carpaccio that they make, they call it artichoke carpaccio. They made the thin artichoke hearts, and then they put them on a plate like you do carpaccio with the thin beef, and they put some olive oil on it. I, I do admit it looked freaking scrummy. That. I'm seriously considering trying one more time to grow. Artichokes are a perennial. They will survive here in the Northeast where I live in Maryland, but you got to do a lot of care. So I got to make sure, you know, there's someone because I can't do it no more. Um, so we'll see. Or you, you never know what might happen in life. There you go. Took some of those leaves off. And now we got to get the third one here. Uh, Clear the decks as usual. I have my compost thing in there. Always compost your garbage. That's for another friend of mine who, when we cook on video, he throws everything into the compost pit. I have a compost pit. It's called a, uh, a huge manure pit from the horses with the hay and the and the uh, and the horse uh, manure. Let's call it. Let's try to be a little bit polite. So all the, and besides, we have chickens. All the refuse we have, we go to the birds. Except this, I don't know if a bird could eat this stuff, tell you guys on the truth. They probably can. A bird can pretty much take care of anything you put in front of it. But I don't know if I want to risk it, all these pinches and stuff, getting it in, getting caught in their little beaks. And then before you know it, I have a dead freaking uh, chicken. And one less egg per day. I'm giving my tomato confit a little stir here. Let me just give you a quick show what it is. It's just your standard tomato sauce, but it's the diced tomato like this. And this will come out thick. You cook this a long time. You want it to be thick like paste. Because then it makes a beautiful dressing on pizza rustica uh, on top. Instead of like, uh, think, of it as, <laughs> think of it as putting ketchup on a hamburger. In fact, I would make this when I was a little more energetic once in a while, and that's what I would put on my hamburger. I call it Sicilian ketchup. So when you cut down the stem here. There we go. See, now it's sucking all in flat like that. I'm just going to be a little bit careful. I'm going to get a bit flat. Yeah, see, just like that. Okay. Now, when you do these normally, and I've seen this done with the two fat ladies, um, Clarissa Dixon Wright and Jennifer Wright uh, Patterson. Um, no, Jennifer Patterson, rather. And they, oh, jeez, wow, that did come up pretty good. But they had globe artichokes, so a lot more of the fibers in here came off. I got to do a little bit of trim job here. No big deal, not much of a loss. Voila. There you go. Now, these tops get cut off. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, that knife ain't gonna work, Manzella. Schmuck. Good chef. In fact, let me give this chef knife a little bit of a tune up. Like that. Let's see how we got in. Notice Amberell. I'm holding it right in case she sees my episodes. Don't hold your freaking breath. Voila. See? You get right into where they have, that's the real choke. We're going to separate those leaves. Now, if I were making this, again, for a restaurant or for some other kind of dish, you would put this in acidulated water, some lemon water. Because uh, this is going to turn brown, but my mother didn't care. And so because of that, I really don't care. Of course, unless someone's paying me to make the fancy looking artichokes. Then I do what I'm told. I'm the cook. It's my job. Voila. Okay. Now, you separate the leaves a little bit like this. See? Separate the leaves. And inside the leaves, you put 
slivers of garlic like this, at least four per artichoke. Right in there. Get them in as best you can. I'll wind putting up the rest into the broth. So, voila. That counts as two. You can always open it up a little bit more. There was my mother, when she had the patience for it, she put in, you ever see that scene in Goodfellas where they had the thin artich uh, thin uh, garlic slices? My mother did that before they did. And this because there's a pot over here. Knives out of the way. The others are no longer needed. Well, I'll need the little one when I do the uh, when I do the stems. See my regular pot here? Put it right in here. See? It's like that. This we have to work on yet. And let's open up this bad boy. See, my mother would do this. When she would steam the stuffed artichoke, she would open it up even more and just fill this thing full of stuffing that she made out of this world. But again, I, I've yet to duplicate it. So... Right now, I only got three artichokes. My mother used to make these eight, nine at a time. And in fact, I had I had a cousin, Maureen. She loved artichokes. She could eat a couple, three of them. So, and they're not too filling. You know, let's face it, it's not a hell of a lot here. There we go. A little extra garlic in that one. Pull the leaves apart like this. You can see it too. Voila. See how starting to get a little dark? But again, uh, I don't care. Now, when you're eating these, these the, the, their tender leaves are right there. And here's where you start just pulling off the end. And then inside is a thistle. You scoop it out. And then you eat the whole bottom of the artichoke. Or quote, quote unquote, heart. All right. In go the rest of the garlic. Suffice it to say, after this, you don't have to worry about vampires, because you're going to reek of garlic. In fact, since I don't know if Ted and Joanne eat artichokes, and my partner in crime is in West Virginia, Amber came to visit last week, she brought me some of those Amish pretzels, I had one, and I, yet again, cursed them, not because I don't like them, don't get me wrong, but I wish I could make those freaking pretzels. Darn! And God knows I've tried, but darn, darn, darn. All right, here's a couple extra. I'm going to shove these in the garden choke here. And this one in here. All right, you got bad boys go in there. Now the outfit, I'll show you, I'll, I'll give the camera a peek at those in a little bit. Um, they go, they kind of like stay right in the pot. Now, use an even smaller knife to cut the very tip off of this. I'll be very honest with you. <laughs> Cutting these tips, there's not a lot here to eat. But right, see, you see that very center, that white part? That is tender and delicious. Everything else is fiber. If you eat this, you are going to have such freaking agita, it's not funny. So, off this comes. There we go. And from that home stem, that's pretty much what you got. And that goes. Cut this down a little bit. You hear that bubbling in the background? That's a tomato uh, pomodoro confit. All right, tomato confit. Shut the frig up, smart asses. Now, take that piece off. You know, tonight, uh, tomorrow, I'm helping a friend make some uh, pizza rustica, and this, that'll be the typing. 
but not like a pizza again, a pizza rustica. This is going to be like the Italian version of Quiche Lorraine. <laughs> Anyhow. Voila. There you go. So this is what it looks like in the pot. See? Now, you got to be more than generous with the salt on this. So we're going to go for a good tablespoon. But the thing is, you put half of it in the water. Whoop, there's a big chunk of salt in there. Break that puppy down. Oh, let me rephrase it. Half a, half a tablespoon. Half a tablespoon of salt in the water, okay? And then in the center, in the actual artichoke, one quarter teaspoon of salt. So a little bit of salt there. And right, get it right in between the leaves. One, two, and three. So all together is about a tablespoon of salt in this whole dish. So trust me, it's just going to bring out the flavor of the water. Right, let me stir the confit. See the confit when it starts to get this thick, that's when you got to be real careful because this sucker will burn like no, no tomorrow. It's just like I said, my standard sauce just cooking for a long time. Now, here comes the tricky part. Olive oil. Put it right into each artichoke. A goodly amount. And then all around the pot. Use pretty close to I would say about a half a cup, all told. Yeah, about a half a cup. There we go. Because what we do is, well, what I do, and what I would make it, I would skim the olive oil, almost like an artichoke broth. That is fantastic. Just to sip. So now we put some water in this. I got my three-cup container. You just want to bring the water up to the artichokes about two-thirds of the way and one of the reasons why you put them in there the way we did they float and shove together like that oh they started to float all right they started to float so I stopped putting in the uh, the water now I'm going to pick up the camera see the water in the with the artichokes, they haven't started to float, so they're good. There we go. Put that back there. So there we have it. Oh, damn fly. We've had a warm week. So here we have artichokes a la chicky, or braised artichokes, technically. And um, it takes about 45 minutes or so to cook. You'll know they're done when you reach into a leaf and... It pops right out. You taste it. You go. You're you're in, you're in seventh heaven for food. So uh, I'm going to put this on the stove, bring it up to a boil, lower to a simmer, and then I'll keep it on from there. I will get a shot of what it looks like when it's done, as always. Um, ditto with the tomato confit. I'll show you that. But again, I, I'm just showing. For, you know, you already know how to make my uh, uncle Bart's famous tomato sauce. Just that you don't that you don't marginate the uh, tomatoes. You put them in diced. In fact, these are mini diced. You can still use the, the diced tomatoes too. So, um, and they're a little bit quicker to cook because you're just boiling out all that excess liquid. So it's like a, a thick paste. That's why be, with that, be careful with your salt, okay? So that's it for now. That's our artichokes. Um, this is Uncle Bart for College Cuisine. Eat more and enjoy. See you next time. Hoping to get some... Um, biscuits and gravy soon and maybe I'll make a pizza rustica a la pie shell we'll call it instead of a pizza again like my mom made because that involves about 20 pounds worth of Italian meat anywho take care bye bye here's the artichokes cooking up there's not enough light